Canada is a very young country with people of various race, religion, and ethnicities. At the time of war, this proud nation calls upon the best and the most courageous to defend the value of the country, no matter what their culture, tribe, religion and background are, as long as they identify themselves as Canadians. One of these proud and fearless Canadians is Francis Pegar Megabo, or Peggy, the famous Canadian veteran, who was an indigenous soldier, and was awarded three military medals, a British War Medal and the Victory Medal for his heroism in war. What could have earned him such high honor and made him such a respected figure in history? Francis was born on Parry Island Reserve in Nobel, Ontario in 1891. Soon after, he lost his father, and his mother left him to return to her own tribe. Francis was left in the care of the man who also raised his father after the death of his parents. As soon as the First World War started, Francis volunteered to join the military. Although the Canadian government discouraged indigenous people from enlisting in the war, Francis was able to join the 1st Canadian Infantry Battalion. Francis practiced a mix of Catholicism and Anishinaabe spirituality which gave him courage to rush into battle with no fear. He decorated his tent with traditional symbols like deer, the symbol of the clan he belonged to. He also practiced traditional customs such as wearing moccasins, a special sort of footwear made from animal hide, instead of combat boots. After a few months of training, Francis and his regiment were deployed to France in 1915 to fight in the Second Battle of Ypres. There, a brilliant sniper he was, he would wait for the German soldiers to arrive, and any unfortunate German, who passed by Francis's sight would end up shot in the head. His marksmanship and scouting skills were no match for any of his enemies. At this rate, Germans were overwhelmed and resorted to dirty tactics. They started using chlorine gas for the first time, which almost killed half of the Peggy's battalion's soldiers. However, Francis wasn't about to go easy on them. He survived the gas to give the Germans hell. In 1916, Francis fought in more battles. In one in particular, he was tasked with delivering critical messages, but he got shot in the leg during his mission. He wasn't about to let that wound stop him, and quickly rushed back to the battlefield, and carried on with his mission. His bravery was so impressive that he received his first military medal for his service. A year later, Francis's leg was healed, and once again he returned to the front line. There was a fierce battle going on, but he'd already gotten used to running around under heavy fire, so he rushed through the battlefield to help his fellow comrades capture the Passchendaele Ridge. Francis's injuries had taken their tolls though. He developed pneumonia, and was hospitalized. Although he was able to fight it off, he had to deal with chest pains for the rest of his life. But what's a little chest pain for a soldier like Francis? Nothing could ever get in the way of him accomplishing his duties for his country. This unbelievable conviction was rewarded with a bar to his military medal. Francis's final battle was the Battle of Scrape in 1918, for which he was rewarded a second bar. He was one of the 38 Canadians who had the honor of receiving two bars. After the war ended, Francis returned back to Canada. However, his life hadn't changed for better. The natives' situation and livelihood was not the best in the reserve he used to live. The government didn't seem to show much concern for indigenous Canadians, so Francis decided to roll his sleeves up and make things right. He became involved in local and federal politics and was elected as the chief of Parry Island Band. He valued indigenous rights above all, and could be considered one of the first activists in the national indigenous rights movement. When the Second World War occurred, Francis found himself more interested in politics rather than war, but he still served as a sergeant major in the local militia. In 1945, he served two terms as the Supreme Chief of the Native Indian Government. After retirement, 
Francis decided to spend the rest of his days next to his family. However, the long years of war had taken their toll on Francis's body, and his lungs had been badly damaged. He died in 1952 at the age of 64, but his legacy never died. In 1967, he became a member of Canada's Indian Hall of Fame, a display set in Brantford, Ontario, to honor indigenous leaders in the history of Canada. His family also donated his various medals to the Canadian War Museum in Ottawa. Even after death, Francis is remembered as the best sniper of the First World War, and as a genuine and devout leader, who tried his best to improve the lives of indigenous people. Truly, a hero to all Canadians.